In this video, we look at ESPR and daylight factor calculations. We're going to use ESPR and radiance together. So here is the office building. It's the same as I've used in the previous ESPR and Blender video. And we're going to focus on the open plan ground level space. Opening up the ASPR model, as we saw before, we want to choose visualization. And this will invoke for colored rendered an E2R module, which drives radiance to do a number of different tasks. And informations can be held in several files. Here is the E2R module, which has been passed the information. We want to interactively set up the radiance to do daylight factors. And we choose the zone that we're going to be focused on. And then we have to choose which surface to base our grid on. In this particular case, we want to do the floor. So there it is. And we're going to set our grid 900 millimeters above the floor. And we need to find out the edge in that zone which we want to make the grid aligned with. So we choose that. And then we say, what size of grid? I'm going to make it 10 by 10. It's going to save that information to a file so that we can reload it later on. So here is the grid. Now, you could potentially change this now if you need to. But basically, we're going to do under daylight factor analysis. So would we like to run the simulation? Yes. Um, we're going to be asked for convergence criteria, how close a convergence is required. It's going to melt the CPU doing two bounces, then three and four. So we get these numbers will be updated as the number of ambient bounces goes up. And we want to, if you want to see what's going on, you look behind and there will be some chatter in the base window. So back to here, now we're up to two ambient bounces and the numbers have changed slightly. Now, and then there's three ambient bounces. So we're running this basically 10 times um, actual speed. It took approximately five minutes to do the full analysis. And now we're up to four bounces. So it takes a little bit longer, the more bounces we've got. Some numbers will be changing a bit more than others. paint's drying, isn't it? And now we get to five bounces and we've converged. So good idea to capture this and screen grab it. Um, so you've got these numbers for referencing. If they're written into a file, but this will help you keep track of what is what. So often when we're involved in visual assessments, we want to do multiple assessments. And so we've done daylight factors. Oh, but how about we add another scene in order to get an inside view? So we pick internal image and um, the focus zone, the same place that we did the daylight factors for, confirm a root name and some documentation. 
And let's pick, say, a spring afternoon. The sun will be down low, potentially coming in. And we're going to offset the uh, ground level just a little bit below and say, OK, that's our scene description. Shall we carry on? No, because I want to go and look at some things. So um, first, we need to set up a viewpoint. So we're going to create a new view and give it a name. Ground level on the west, fine. OK, and there's our viewing point. Uh, we need to go and edit the eye point to get it into that room. So we're going to edit some numbers and gradually uh, shift the view into the location that we want. OK, almost there, getting a little bit better. Now we want to um, turn the azimuth around to be pointing out size, and we want to give us a much wider view, so 90 by 60. Yeah, that's looking a bit better. OK, another little change here to, um, yeah. So we've honed in, saved that, and now we want to review the parameters in here. At the moment, we've only got one diffuse reflection, so it'll go relatively quickly. Once we've sorted things out, well, then we can come back. But we're going to render the scene with that viewpoint in a standard color, a single time step to the screen. And then here's Radiance doing the thing that Radiance does. And it gradually gets the view better. Now, I'm not going to bother being interactive about changing the view or anything else. Once I'm agreeing that this is a good view, I could go back and get a much higher resolution rendering than just doing a screen capture on this. But that's the time period needed for that kind of work. The next task, hey, we're going to look at a much more complicated building and a lot more complicated facade. So stay tuned.